Hi guys, I'm Elliot. And I'm John. And we're the creators of Unbearable Winter. So today we're here to kind of share with you about the game and teach you the basics of how to play. It's relatively easy to set up. If you bought a premium edition of the game, you actually get an exclusive play mat where it tells you what, where to place what. Yeah, so the rubber playmat itself will uh, have these like uh, little markings on, the, on them yeah. to show you the way. Okay, so first things first, you have to put down uh, five Calamity cards on the Calamity calendar and then put four face down locations. The rest of the locations can be placed in the location deck segment. Of course, shuffle the resource and the item decks and put them in the respective piles. Uh, next, what we have to do is actually uh, pick our character. Okay. So, uh, we have seven unique characters, mm. each with unique powers. Which one would you like? I want to pick Foggy. Okay, great. So, once you pick a character... Actually, it's the card. Yep. Uh, once you pick a character, you actually get the uh, appropriate player reference card. It will tell you everything about the skills and what abilities they can use. Uh, we'll also, since it's our first time playing through, we'll give you a gameplay reference card, and it'll show you exactly what the phases are, uh, how to play turn by turn. All right, and uh, just for demonstration's sake, I... We'll pick Slick. I mean, I look the most like him. Sure. At this point in time, we normally distribute the roll cards because there's definitely one bad guy amongst you. In a four to six player game, always make sure to shuffle one of the bad roll cards in the deck. Right? So in a four player game, there'll be like normally one there'll bad one, guy. Yeah. yeah, one bad guy, five and six, exactly the same. But for the purpose of this play test, we'll both play as the good guy. Yeah, just to show how it goes. Okay, so. When that's done, we also need our starting resources and items. So each player draws three cards. And at this point of time, you can kind of like discuss with each other what you want to have. Yeah. So um, I got two food and one power. All good. I have uh, two heat and one food. So I'm going to take the heat card first, okay. since you don't have any heat on that side. Then I'm going to take the food card. So first. we have heat and food. Um, the game has three kinds of resources, food, heat, and power. You'll need them to survive the calamities, but more on that later. So once you shuffle them finish, everyone's put them back. We each draw one resource, uh, one item card. My bad. Okay. Okay. Uh, one more thing is to determine who the alpha bear is. The alpha bear is the first player token. Usually it's the hairiest person begins. So yeah. amongst the two of us, you're definitely hairier. Oh boy. Okay, so I'm the Alpha Bear, I hold on to the Alpha Bear token, and we'll go through what exactly the Alpha Bear does as we play the game. Correct. So in this game, the objective of the good guys is you want to survive the five calamities that we've set, we've set down. The Bad Bear's job is very simple. You have to make sure that doesn't happen. Each player has five health, and the moment you have zero health per player, um, you die. You did. You did. You did. So, the second way the Bad Bear can win is to actually destroy the home of the bears, which is Bear Valley Hills. You can see Bear Valley Hills has 12 cage bars that protect the home. Uh, there'll be things throughout the game that remove these cage bars, such as the winter dice or the calamities. Once there are no bars in the location, you're dead as well. You're dead as well. And the Bad Bear wins. And the Bad Bear wins, yeah. Okay, so now that we have everything in order, we have our resources, our items, we need to open the location. All right, so let's see where we landed today. Yep. So there are four locations, and every time you flip a location, they'll tell you how many like humans there are. You'll take the appropriate number of meeples, uh, human tokens, and you just place them accordingly. So one, and then one in. bam, and then one in. bam. Great. So that is the start of the game. Locations have special effects, so when you go into them, um, You'll sort of like deal with the, with the things that happen, yep. the bad stuff. Right, without further ado, we'll flip day one. Right. So day one is calamity is called Radical Radiation. And on it, they'll have a title text. It will show you like the special effect for the day. So today's effect is whenever a bear rolls the nuclear die, you'll have to roll an additional nuclear oh, die. Wow. Um, the nuclear die is not a, it's bad, obviously. It's it has bad, what yeah. nuclear inside. Everything is bad. When you roll it, depending on what face you land on, you will lose that many number of health tokens. So if you roll a one, you lose one health. If you roll the two, which is considered a critical hit, you lose two health. Yeah. Yeah. So rolling these dice, never a good thing. Um, there is also a requirement for the day on this card. It says we need food. Aha. Uh -huh. right. So I, I picked food just now. I didn't pick food just so now. So now we need to find one more food. Yeah. 
Uh, the requirement below, it tells you, let's say, food, heat, or power. You need that many number of uh, food equal to the number of players. Yeah. Yeah. So let's say uh, in the four-player game, you need four, five, you need five, and, and so on and so forth. So uh, for the failure, if you don't have enough of that resource for the end of the day, you'll have to look at the text that says, each bear here loses one health and rolls a nuclear die. Okay. So that's bad because it works in tandem with the rules effect. Yeah. It says if you were to roll a nuclear die, you roll an additional one. Yeah. So technically speaking, when you fail this calamity, it says lose a health and roll two nuclear dice. So you really don't want to You don't want to do it. Yeah, you, yeah. Don't want, you don't want that. Okay, so how the turns work? As the alpha bear, I'll make the first move. Sure. And I'm going to the location called Souvenir Shop. The text on the location says, when collecting items on this location, you may roll a winter dice to collect an additional item. Okay, cool. So I'm going to collect as my action this round, but I'm going to collect a resource because we were short. Right, we need food for today's calamity. Exactly. So um, how do you do this? Okay, so how I do it is, on my card it says, look at the top two cards of the resource or item deck, draw one and place the other below the deck. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at two cards okay, I can't see them. on the resource deck. Yep. Um, unfortunately, they are heat and power, not food. Right. So I'm going to take... take. You, can't, you can't show it to anybody, but you can tell them stuff. Exactly. So I'm going to take heat and place power below the deck. Okay, great. So that's your first action for the round. That's uh, it'll pass on to me. So on my turn, I'm going to use Slick. I'm really good at cling humans. So I'm going to go to a location like the Polar Popsicle Stand and I'm going to try to remove them. But first, it says when entering this location, roll the winter dice. So here goes nothing. Great, I rolled a critical. <laughs> That's not a good sign. That is not a good so, sign. So uh, when you roll the winter dice, you're going to remove cage bars equal to the amount rolled. In this case, two. So goodbye and goodbye. Two of these bars are gone. It's very hard to fix bars in this game, so you have to protect them with your life. Uh, and next up, I said I was going to kill the humans. So first and foremost, when you frenzy, you're going to make a choice. Mm -hmm. Either you straight up remove one human, or you can dig deep and use your bear-like reflexes to gamble. So if you choose to gamble, you can roll the frenzy dice. This red dice here has a 50% chance of hitting a claw mark. If you do, that means you can remove two humans instead. Okay, so here goes nothing. And I hit. Great. Nice. So by hitting them, I remove two humans from the game. Boom. That's two less bars to worry about at the end nice. of the day. That's great. Okay, cool. That's um, my turn. You usually go in an, until everyone is completed, and then it goes back to the alpha bear. That begins the second round of actions, and also the final round before uh, contributions happen. Okay, so on your turn, are you going to move to somewhere else, John? Uh, no, I'd like to stay on this location because I don't want to incur another penalty from entering another location, if there is one. Um, instead, knowing I'm short on food, I am going to scavenge. Cool. So what do I do when I scavenge? The first thing I do is I spend one instinct and I roll the scavenge dice. Whatever the number is, I add two and look at that number of cards off the top of the resource or item deck. Correct. I will pick one of them and I will shuffle the rest back into the deck. Okay, cool. So let's, yeah. uh, let's, let's okay. see the action. So I roll Ooh, a five. So I add two, that means I get to look at the top seven cards of the resource deck. Right, it's like collecting, but yeah. with an additional bonus to it. Normally you collect like two, five, so this six, is two plus the number you roll. Seven, so I, I'm definitely going to find a food here. Hopefully, I mean, uh, I'm definitely there's only three great. resources. I found a food. Great. Great, so I'm going to put the food in my hand. You know, I'm not supposed to know about this, yeah. but yeah. But I'm telling him because I'm a good bear. Okay, yeah, and I'm a good bear too. And then I will shuffle yep. the resource deck. Correct. So, on my turn, I'm going to move over to the souvenir shop where you're at because there are two pesky humans left and try to get rid of them since Slick is actually very good at removing humans. So, let's see where we go. Oh, oh but I no. missed. But no worries, since I'm Slick, I can actually spend one instinct with my special power to re-roll the frenzy dice. So, great, I finally hit it. And now, boom, two more humans are gone. And there's only two left. And there's only two left, so that's actually a good thing. Now, um... Usually on our turn, you can also spend play items if you want. Yep. Uh, but I'm going to keep mine since it's not very useful at the moment. Right. So L, items can be played only during your turn or can they play as and when? So most of the time, items can only be used on your turn unless it says otherwise. Great. Okay. Um, after everyone has taken a, a second round of actions, 
That's when we move on from the survival phase into the contribution phase. As that's happening, there's one very important rule. There are these two humans who are still left in, in the zoo, so they're going to remove two more cage bars. Oh, man. Now, if there were other bears in the game that shared a location with them, they can actually lose health to prevent that bar from being removed. So uh, if there's one human there, you can choose to lose one health um, to prevent one of the bars from being removed. You don't remove the human, but at least you, you're protecting your home. Yeah. Um, if there were two humans on it, you could pay one or two health to prevent that many of bars from being removed. Yeah. So for the contribution phase, the first thing that happens is as the alpha, you get to do something. Okay, so as the alpha bear, I can actually deny one of the other bears from joining this contribution phase. Right. If I feel like someone is the bad bear, or maybe I'm the bad bear, I can kind of single someone out and he actually sits out the contribution phase. Right. But that does not change the amount of resources we need to contribute to survive the calamity. Okay. So in a four-player game or a five-player game, we still need four or five That's resources. Correct. Okay, yes. fantastic. So um, contributions happen for the first player after the alpha bear. Right. So the alpha bear is the last person to give cards into this pool. Now we're going to collect contributions. And the first thing that happens is uh, it's the player after the alpha bear. So John, uh, in this two-player game, I have no food whatsoever. Oh dear. Thankfully, I use my scavenge skill and I have two food. But I'm not going to review that to, to yeah. any okay. other bear. Right, Actually, so yeah. normally after you collect all the resources, uh, we go in around and then you shuffle it up and you reveal them. Okay, so Did we made enough for two people? We made enough for two people. Great, so we have enough food for the day. We don't have to um, suffer the penalties of failure itself. Perfect. Great. And now we move on into the leadership phase. Yes, that's correct. So, uh, in a bigger group, sometimes you've asked yourself the question, are you happy with this person's leadership? Is this person worthy of being the alpha? Yeah. Uh, John, I don't think you're worthy of being the alpha. Would you mind if I became the alpha? Well, I, I know I'm good, so yeah, for sure, I don't mind you being the alpha. Sure. So, the alpha token is actually very, very important. Mm. It helps you single out people during the contribution phase, and um, the most of all, during the contribution phase, you're the last person to give cards. So you're actually in a very good uh, position yep. to make the biggest bluff. Mm -hmm. If you give the bad guy the alpha token, you're going to be in a real world of trouble. But for everyone else, the alpha token is a way uh, for just going first in general. Yep. Yep. Okay, so that is the end of one turn of unbearable winter, one full calamity one day. One full calamity. We survived. We survived. Yes. We have all our health intact. We use a little bit of, re of instinct, but you know, that's normal yep. in a game. Uh, and the idea is that you're going to complete up to five days. If the good bears can survive, good job. It's not easy. Yeah, it's not but easy. if you're a bad guy, I hope you're having fun uh, torturing all your fuzzy friends. All right, and that is all for our little how-to on unbearable winter. Do check out the Kickstarter and uh, share this with your friends if you think they'd be interested in one of the most grisly social deduction games there is right now. Rawr!